Now, not many know that my first car from my own salary was the first generation Hyundai i20. Way back, as a 20 year old family man with a young daughter, the i20 seemed perfect for my needs. Over the years, I've seen the i20 getting several updates and becoming better and better. But what I see here today is completely unthinkable of. Now, before we move further, this is not going to be a drive review. We will drive the car probably next month. But as of today, a complete look at the exteriors, the interiors and a USB of the car that has to be the engines on offer. Are the engines so important with the new i20? Definitely. Now, this, this one will give you three different engines on offer with multiple gearbox options. The one you see here, the GDI motor, has to be the one that will complement the personality of the i20. It's a firecracker of a unit. We see this in the Aura, we see this in the Nuos, we see this in the Venue as well and the Verna as well. Thankfully, like the Verna and the Venue, this one will put out 120 PS of power, not 100 like the Aura and the Nuos. It comes to you in two in, uh, gearbox options, a DCT, a 7-speed DCT or an IMT. IMT is basically a more affordable kind of semi-automatic. You have the gear lever but no clutch. Apart from this, the second patrol unit is the same 1.2 that has been powering the i24 years and years. But this one will be an advanced version. It's called the Advanced Kappa. Two different states of tune, 88 PS for the automatic, G, huh? automatic with the 1.2 as well. That is the IVT, uh, Hindu's logo for a CVT basically. So CVT, IVT with the 1.2 with 88 PS and for the price conscious buyer, the 83 PS with the 5-speed manual. For diesel lovers like you and me, you also have a 1.5 litre diesel unit. Again, the same we see on the venue as well, 100 PS of power and Hyundai says it is going to be the most efficient 1.5 diesel car in India. So probably a certified economy of over 25 kmph. So moving on from the heart of the i20 is the way the car looks. I think over the months you and I have seen the car in multiple videos. It has been showcased internationally and thankfully the Indian version looks very close to the international version. The front end is something that screams sportiness. For some people, I think the grille could be on the louder side, but overall the sharp front end, the LED headlamps, the lovely Roy wheels and the bold rear, I think the less I say about it, the better it is because the car looks good in flesh. Have a look. Now, before I show you the interiors of the i20, I think Hyundai is very proud of the i20 badge and why not? There are as many as seven different places on the exteriors where you can see the i20 logo. You have it around the headlamp mask, uh, casing over here, one on this side, one on the other side. As you move towards the rear of the car, you have the i20 logo, the branding on the lower side across. Uh, by the way, this black strip, it's part of the body. It runs across the whole length of the car. The bumpers are the front, the bumpers are the rear. As you come at the back, you have i20 logo branding inside the tail up assembly as well. So yes, seven different places where you can see it's an i20 after all. Now, when I bought my own i20, one of the main reasons for doing that had to do with the amount of space inside the cabin and the feature list and the good fit and finish on the inside. The same parameters do get carried forward in the new i20 as well. Now, this is going to be a very competitive segment of premium hatchbacks. You have the Tata Ultros, you have Nexa Baleno, you also have the Honda Jazz and you have the Rebash Baleno from Toyota, the Toyota Glanza. So yes, you have a lot of rivals in over here and in terms of sales, the Baleno is still the king. But I think with the new i20, with the kind of features on the inside, the extra space now on the inside, it's a longer wheelbase, remember. And of course, the rich feel, the fit and finish on the inside is definitely going to win the consumer. Remember, it's a longer car, it's a wider car. So yeah, you have more space on the inside. For starters, you can see the amount of headroom on offer. I am a tall person, but in spite of a sunroof over here, I have approximately two inches of headroom over here. Ample, ample amount of your leg room. This thing goes all the way back, but this is my driver's position. Now, this is an overly black interior, which will be standard in the turbo version. So the non-turbo 1.2 and the 1.5 diesel will have a dual tone finish on the inside. But the turbo one, like some of the other Hyundai cars, is going to give you an all black interior theme. 
broken well with sporty red inserts on the seats on the leather wrap for the gear lever around the ac vents over here and of course on the steering wheel so yes to, for, to my liking as a personal uh, uh, tip over here the black interiors do feel nice they go down well with the sporty intentions of the car i did speak about features and we all know hyundai loves to load their cars with features something that most of the drivers do not offer from the sunroof over here to your wireless charging with a cooling pad you do have a lovely large display it is the largest in the segment and then you have the lcd it's a fully dg console over here for the speedometer uh, console something we saw in the verna as well and because you have the connected features you have blue link over here you do have the buttons on the inner mirror for the sos for the rsa and for the blue link support Apart from that, uh, yeah, I forgot one thing. The turbo version also gives you these lovely drilled sporty pedals over here to go down well with the character of the car. So to summarize, space, the seats, they snug you well, they hug you well, the fit and finish, the features, top notch for the i20. But it's also going to be a family car. So things at the back, well, let's go. By the way, as compared to the early i20, the entire cabin is new apart from the key of this car. This is similar to the earlier version, but as I told you, the design is new. It does not resemble the older i20 at all, even from the rear uh, seat perspective. Now, the wheelbase has gone up uh, as compared to the earlier version. It's also a wider car, so you do have lovely shoulder room. And Hyundai claims it has the best-in-class uh, leg space, which means it beats the Ultros when it comes to the rear leg space over here. And I think they are right. This seat has been positioned for my height. I'm a tall driver, six feet tall. And yet, you can see I have a good three inches of knee room left over here i can take my uh, feet below the driver's seat and also in spite of sitting upright i do have two inches of headroom this is phenomenal by premium hatchback standard so anyone in the market looking for a sporty car with features with space a premium hatchback like the i20 will definitely keep you happy now like the front theme of the horizontal slats on the ac vents and the face here the same slats can also be seen on the doors over here you do have red inserts around the small uh, pockets on the doors uh, in the sporty version only in the turbo version only the door well it does not open too wide as compared to other cars the ultra especially but thankfully the window goes on almost completely flat apart from this small thingy the windows are large so you don't feel claustrophobic and overall i think even the central transmission tunnel isn't too high so the fifth passenger will not have any issues in terms of privacy you have your ac vents you have a place to keep your phone you have a charging outlet so i think i am definitely impressed be the front seat or the second seat of the i20 and the boot of the i20 well definitely has gone up in size as compared to the earlier version but one thing missing over here is a 60 40 split option for the rear seat that is something that always adds to the practicality and some of the rivals or cars in the same price offer you that and if i could have wanted a uh, auto dimming mirror on the inside and a flat bottom steering please by the way for your peace of mind from a customer's perspective the i20 will also come with the same variable warranty thingy that hyundai offers on other cars so you can opt for a standard three-year warranty or a high mileage limit or a four-year warranty or a five-year warranty by doing so if you go up the number of years you have to reduce your usage but that is very good sir, for people who have less driving to do but they want a long lasting peace of mind factor with the car so there you go the all new hyundai i20 we have been waiting for this for months and months but now i think the wait will be worth it the launch will definitely happen in the festive season and as i told you the segment is full of options the baleno the jazz the tata ultras and of course the glanza as well but given the entire package of what a customer seeks a customer seeks design features safety and the overall feel good factor this one has it in terms of designs the higher versions will give you everything from six airbags to a vehicle stability management to electronic stability management it is also an all new platform it's lighter and yet stiffer than ever before so yes if safety will be taken care of it's a european model it sells internationally so hyundai knows the importance of safety in the car now in terms of pricing hyundai might not play the tag of the most affordable car in the segment because features in something that every customer for a premium hatchback will look for a uh, customer spending so much will not go for a base version with less features so there could be possibility that the i20 might come from the magna version onwards not an era but given the bells and whistles and given the way it looks this is something definitely worth waiting for 
booking for and then owning as a customer as a family